This week on The Watchmen, amid the horror of October 7th, miraculous stories of courage are emerging. We're joined by one Israeli family that survived the Hamas onslaught against all odds. And we learn how Christians are blessing the people of Israel in what may be the most difficult period in the modern history of the Jewish state. Hear how God is moving mightily in these dark times, only right here on The Watchmen. to The Watchmen. We've heard many times, and we've documented it here on The Watchmen, the stories of tragedy from October 7th, but there are also stories of incredible bravery and miraculous heroism, and we have one of those heroes with us here today. Dr. Yeftak Gepner joins us along with his daughter, Ruth. We are also joined by our good friends, Pastor Todd Lamphere and Uri Steinberg of City Serve Israel. We've got a lot to unpack. Gentlemen, we'll, we will be with you in a minute to hear about the Christian Jewish tie here post-October 7th. Amazing things happening there with Christians helping and blessing the affected communities in southern Israel. But speaking of those affected communities, Dr. Gebner, thanks so much, first of all, for joining us from Ain Habasur, about four miles from the Gaza border in a beautiful region called Eshkol in, in southern Israel. Let's cut right to the chase and talk about October 7th, Dr. Um, the experiences, your personal experiences that morning, how your family was affected, your brother Eldad. Take us back to that fateful morning. So October 7 was supposed to be a beautiful Saturday morning. Yeah. It was this sunny day. Everything was quiet and relaxed. We were supposed to have a jogging, had a breakfast with the family, but it all changed at 6.30. I was in my bed with my wife. I look at her. There was a massive bombing around us, massive uh, missile attack. Then we start here shooting around us. We are used to rockets in the past 22 years. Yeah. They've been bombing us for 22 years. That was a big surprise to hear that, sadly. To hear the automatic machine guns around our village, around our farm town. We realize it's something big. We start getting the videos and the photos that are not, they're coming in, they're coming to get us or in our villages. My brother was the only one with the M16. We had only few M16, only few rifles at, at the village that morning. He closed the gate at 7.52, two minutes before they came. Two minutes separate in absurd for being second secondary on your oars. With Hamas terrorists, literally at the gate. Hamas terrorists, many of them, came fully armed with automatic machine guns, RPGs, and everything they got. And my brother, El Ad, the only one with the M16 in front of them. He stopped them. He stopped them by himself with a limited number of bullets. Dozens of Hamas terrorists. Dozens of them. Pickup trucks, motorcycles, swarming the Moshav where you uh, live. Absolutely. He realized. If we not stop them, they will get in. Once they're in, we know, have no idea how we're going to fight them. And we know what they did when they did get into other communities. Some 1,200 people slaughtered on October 7th throughout southern Israel. But your brother, who was wounded seriously, by the way, but thank God he's okay now in an act of just incredible bravery. But you also came alongside him eventually as this attack commenced and a few others in the Moshav. Tell us about, you, you were few in number, but, and you were fighting against tremendous odds, but you were able to push the terrorists back. Tell us more about that, how you were personally involved in this. So God was with us that morning. In the past few months, we had people came to stole our car during night. So we have been trained and prepared for that morning without even knowing that, because we had a big WhatsApp group, like a big, like a Facebook group, that the head of the security asked us to go to defend the fence, go to the front and the big gate with whatever you have. Some people have a, a very few M16, some of them have a, a, a handguns. And myself, I had a rock in my hand because we had to protect the village. 
But your brother gave me a call after you got shot to come take him to the hospital. I'm, I'm a professor of the Faculty of Medicine, and I realized there's a bullet coming in without going out. It can be anywhere in the body, including the internal organs, which means he's under a, a, a life risk, immediate life risk. I drove him from the back gate, from the off road to the, to the main road that go to the hospital. He told me right before we went about to go out, there might be more out there. So I let him back in the car. It's Tesla, I had a Tesla. And there's a reason I mentioned that. I looked with the car to the, right, to the left, it was clear, but when I looked to the right and we go on the road, there remain like 30 of them on pickups, five motorcycles, started a massive shooting on us. One of the 30 sniper, Hamas terrorists. Right in front of us, 300 feet. One of them were like, like one of the snipers where they tried to hit my brother's head and because he was laid back, the bullet like were literally touch his hair. In the he car. Was, got hurt, shooting, was screaming, blood all over, no windows, no, 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 all the glasses were all around. We were like, went reverse for like 40 miles per hour, like, like Tesla can do. And few of them trying to catch us shooting and we luckily we managed to go back and, and saved him. So they're, they're chasing you on, in pickup trucks, in motorcycles, heavily armed alongside your car. Uh, this is almost, people watching are probably saying, this almost sounds like something out of a, a horror movie, but it, it was all too real. It is too real, and I'm with a shirt, with the shoes without the socks. Yeah. Beautiful Saturday morning. You just woke up. Unarmed. When we been there with them, we had nothing. We have second away, second away for being killed that morning. Dr. Gepner, absolutely incredible story of survival. And folks, when we come back, we will hear the rest of the story from Dr. Gepner. We will also hear from his daughter, Ruth. That's coming up, don't move. earlier, you were used to rocket fire, sadly, living in the South, in your beautiful Moshav. But clearly, when you heard the automatic gunfire, this was something different. You knew right away. What was going through your mind as this was unfolding? Did you realize there was an invasion of Southern Israel underway? I, it, you knew clearly this is different. We knew this is different. At the first second I wake up, I told my wife, this is serious. This is different. Let's put the kids in the safe room. You know, in Israel, every house, especially where we live, have a safe room. But it was made for bombing, not from people that come in to slaughter, to kill, and, 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 and a children, an infant, and, and elderly people in their bed. So we put the kids and my you wife. Have three kids. Three kids. 15, 13, and 10, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, correct. And I went out without knowing how are they. Did you use that rock? I didn't. Luckily, I didn't. But yeah. I was planning, like, to do whatever I need. You know, you got to do whatever you can to protect the village. Yes, of course. So I was planning, like, to hit one of them and take his, his gun and try to fight. But yeah. You're fighting for your life and your uh, family's lives. Absolutely, you no. Know, on, on the way here on the plane, I saw a, a James Bond movie and, and I said, ah, this is nothing. <laughs> this is nothing compared to what we have been through. And you saw as you were that hectic, needless to say, drive to the hospital, a mad dash as Hamas is chasing you quite literally. You saw destroyed vehicles on the road and, and you saw the carnage that Hamas wrought. They had such a pure evil to kill innocent people on Saturday morning. You know, any liberal person cannot support the side of people, not only the 3,000 Hamas terrorists that came in, also the 6,000 civilians that came back and forth four times. How a person can get into a burn house when there is a murder baby, step over to take his iPad back home to his kids. How? It, it, the only word that comes to mind, Dr. Gebner, is demonic. Um, and you mentioned, I think a key point there, yes, 3,000 Hamas terrorists crossed into Israel that day, but also 6,000 Gazan civilians on the backs of those Hamas terrorists. 
just came to loot and pillage. Looted, raped, murdered, do anything they can to spray the heat. You know, this is not just an absor versus the, the, the pickup. This is not Israel versus Hamas. Is the hope versus the evil. Yes. The, this time it hit us, next time it could be anywhere in the world. It's good versus evil, Dr. Gettner. You, you put it quite rightly. And Israel is the first line of defense for all of us, for Western civilization, no doubt. Ruth, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. I can't imagine how difficult this is for you. It's brave for you just to join us today. We really appreciate it. Your dad just unpacked what happened October 7th, some of the experiences your family had. I assume you went to the safe room with your siblings. Tell us a bit about your morning on October 7th. Uh, yeah, so my, as my dad said, they, my parents woke up that morning to the sound of uh, uh, horrible things. And um, they woke us up, put us in the safety room. Um, I was there with uh, my mom, my neighbors, and my siblings. My dad left really early that morning. Um, I remember um, being there for 17 hours and... Um, in we, the safe room for 17 yes. hours. And Whew. in all that time we got, we didn't really know what was going on. My friends were um, sending me messages and videos of um, scream screams and um you hear uh, either their language talking you hear them talking yeah. and yeah and um the messages that i got are just they were whole horrible you hear uh, people asking and um for help begging um and that they can't talk and that they shot their mom and that their These sister, are your friends on yeah. whatsapp communicating with you exactly and um, some, of, uh, some of them are not with us today. Um, it's very hard because um, it's not only people um, getting kidnapped and murdered, it's, it's just, when you hear all these things, it's, um, it's really hard to process um, right now what was going on that day. Ruth, yeah. you're, you're 15 years old. I am. No 15-year-old should have to go through what you went through. Um, you lost your best friend. I did. On October 7th. Three of your close friends were abducted and taken back to Gaza by Hamas terrorists. Thankfully, I believe they've been released. They were. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. This is lasting indefinitely as the war goes on in Gaza, as Israel does what needs to be done and crushes this threat once and for all so they can never, ever attack the Jewish people ever again. Absolutely. You know, from the Holocaust, we made a beautiful country. After the 73 war, we became to be a startup nation. Enabsor was established by my parents and other 80 families that made this piece of land from sand to beautiful, growing, right. and successful region. We will do it again. It's our shift. There's not even a question we will make this piece of land yeah. so successful. They try to break us, we're just gonna be stronger. And you will not only survive, Dr. Gettner, the people of Israel, including Southern Israel, will thrive. And after the break, you'll hear how Christians are helping Israelis to do exactly that. Stick around. Todd Uri Steinberg, my longtime good friend Uri Steinberg, uh, City Serve doing amazing work. And you, we heard Dr. Gepner and Ruth obviously unpack their powerful story and what the people in southern Israel are dealing with right now. And by the way, in northern Israel as well, we've had over 30 communities evacuated because of the Hezbollah threat there. Okay, take us, boil it down for us. Uh, take us to what you're doing right now. Literally, you're taking us to Israel. The City Serve team is there on the ground. Uh, Uri, we'll start with you being the Israel rep for City, for City Serve. Tell us a bit more about what you're doing uh, to, to comfort, really, uh, the people of Israel right now. Yeah, thanks, Eric. You know, after October 7th, we were thinking, okay, how, how, do, we, how do we best utilize our, the energy of the Christian community through City Serve in Israel? 
you know, and, and it was definitely a godly thing that we connected to and absorb. And their story just hit us in the right place. This is a suffering community that needs help. They're gonna be the beachhead of, of the revival of this community, of this area. So many broken kibbutz and mushavs around them will need their help. And by helping and absor, we will be helping to revive a whole, um, a whole uh, area. And I felt this is the time to really make a, a, a leap with Christian and Jewish relationship when it comes to Israel. And when Pastor Todd and myself went down to Elat to visit the families, you could just see what that meant, the fact that you've got a Christian pastor coming to Israel, hugging them, saying, we love you. And I think there's a real power there. So we decided to say, hey, you know, God is putting us in this way. We need to adopt this. You know, there's a, this is a big pie. We're gonna take a sliver of this pie. It's gonna go to Enabsor. And through Enabsor, we're gonna bless this whole region. Yeah, and Pastor Todd, you've answered the call. Uh, going from the United States to Israel on the ground in the wake of October 7th. Uh, why is this so near and dear to your heart as a Christian? Some say, well, Israel's way over there, thousands of miles away, but we have a biblical mandate to bless Israel and the Jewish people, and you're living that out right now in real time. You know, Eric, that, that really is the point right there. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3 is as plain as day that, that God will bless those who bless uh, those from Abraham's seed. That's, uh, that's it. We're to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So, you know, there's so many disasters that City Serve's involved with, whether it's uh, in uh, Maui or in Oklahoma. Uh, those are moments. You know, you're in, you're out. Uh, Israel, however, isn't a moment. In the word that you used, it's a mandate. Uh, it's, it's something that we're commanded to do. And, and when you hear the story of like the Gepners and when you go and you, you, know, you go to a lot like we did and you meet the, these families, uh, they're just so appreciative. Quite frankly, uh, many of whom had never really met an evangelical Christian before. Yeah. And, and so, you, you know, they have their preconceived notions and ideas. But when you come saying, listen, we're here with you, we stand by you, we support you, uh, we love you. Yeah. And we're going to do everything that we can uh, to, uh, to help you, uh, to walk alongside you. Yeah, and you can tell who your true friends are when the going gets tough. That's right. And it's a tough time for the people of Israel right now as the Gepners just laid out. Pastor Todd, I want to ask you as well, off camera we're talking a bit about the biblical significance of the Eshkol region and Ein Habasur and where Dr. Gepner and Ruth live. A story from 1 Samuel has real relevance here in particular. Yeah. Tell us about that. You know, and, and that is the beauty of this because um, they're living out their legacy. You know, and in 1 Samuel chapter 30, it's the story of David and his 600 men. And they go to uh, Ziglag and they're, they, they're defeating Ziglag. But in the process of that, the Amalekites come around, come and steal their, their wives, and, wives and their children and, and all their possessions. So they, when the, David and his 600 men come back, uh, they want to stone David, like, you know, the, and David cries out to God, and God says to him, arise and conquer, for you shall recover all. And I think that's a very important phrase. So the 600 men go after the Amalekites to recover their families, and then they stop at the Valley of Bashur. This is verse 9. The Valley of Bashur is modern-day Enabzur. And 200 of those uh, uh, 600 men said, we're gonna create a beachhead here. We're, we'll have a staging ground here. And they recovered all, met back up with the, uh, uh, the 200 men. And I think that's the, the significance of what they're living out here today is uh, we've made them the staging area so that they can reach out uh, to all of the Valley of Eshkel. Yeah, just a miraculous story of bravery. And it's just incredible to see Christians now coming alongside the people of Israel. And Uri, you've been in this space for years, bringing Christians and Jews together. Uh, as you look forward, difficult days, no doubt, for Israel. But as you look forward, it seems through City Serve, your great work there, that there will be opportunities for Christians to serve. The best way is to really help families, is to really help, you know, this is a these are families right now who um, their livelihood has been cut, yeah. 
who don't have a place to wash their clothes sometimes, who need uh, finance to build a new um, fence around their community, to build new doors that they can really withhold um, terrorist attacks. So, you know, in, in our website, in CityServe, you can just donate, just donate as much as you can. This is the season of giving. And what it does to a family um, is, is incredible. This outpour of love and support that I have no doubt will really reinforce and continue to invigorate this, this, this movement of really coming together, Christians and Jews coming together. Yeah. And, and really, I think we live in prophetic times in the sense that um, after hundreds of years of being really apart, Christians and Jews are coming closer. This is another event, another testament to this important bond. Um, and I'm happy that we're able to be a facilitator, a conduit, if yeah. you may, in this important task. Yeah, you're a light in the darkness, gentlemen. We truly appreciate it. We cannot thank you enough for joining us. We are praying for you, Dr. Gepner, Ruth, your family, the entire community of Ain Habasur, and we know incredible days lie ahead for you, for Southern Israel, and the entire land of Israel, no doubt. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank God you. bless you all, guys. Thank you so much for thank joining you. us. We really appreciate it. Well, coming up after the break, my final thoughts on the great days that lie ahead for the nation of Israel. Stick around. Welcome back. In the wake of the October 7th massacre, Israeli leaders have vowed to make southern Israel a region of revival. Now, that beautiful region was absolutely devastated by Hamas terrorists, but with heroes like Dr. Yeftak Gepner, who are determined to return home and rebuild. I wouldn't bet against Israel's south thriving once again in the very near future. I was inspired and encouraged by the incredible survival stories we heard this week from Dr. Gettner and his daughter Ruth, and to hear how Christians and Jews are coming together in these dark times. Folks, God is moving. He's a God of miracles and a God of the improbable, as Dr. Gettner saw so clearly on October 7th. And when it comes to his land and his people, the book of Psalms says, he who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. It won't be easy, anything but, yet Israel will prevail in this fight against Hamas and in future battles to come because the God of Israel keeps his promises always. Thanks for joining us this week on The Watchman. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace.